Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 18th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus, growing in the Spirit, in the knowledge of the Word of God, and that you are brimming with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the book of Ephesians. And today we're going to continue where we left off, chapter 2. But before we do, I want to let you know that in the weeks to come, we are going to be introducing a new study by a man by the name of Watchman Nee. And I wanted to tell you about this so you could pick up a copy of this book. It's called The Spiritual Man by Watchman Nee. Now we'll discuss more about Watchman Nee in the weeks to come. But if you want to pick up a copy of this so you can follow along with us, you can do so from either Amazon.com or ChristianBook.com. It is a rather large book, as you can see. And as we have been in our book studies of The Road to Calvary, Humility by Andrew Murray, and currently Absolute Surrender by Andrew Murray, to finalize that study, we're going to be looking at a book by Watchman Nee. And once we complete that series... It will be a good transition for us to step into this book, The Spiritual Man, and glean from it those truths that will help us be better followers of the Lord Jesus. Well, with that being said, let's jump right into Ephesians chapter 2. I trust you have your Bibles open. And let's begin at verse 1. Now it says, And you hath he quickened. That word quickened in the Greek means reanimated. You were once lifeless. You were once dead in your sins, but Christ has quickened you who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Because in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. All your hopes, all your dreams, all your desires, all your wants, all your pleasures came from what this world had to offer. And you did so because it was according to the prince of the power of the air, Lucifer, Satan, who is the god of this world at this moment. And he is the spirit, notice that word spirit, he is the invisible force that now works in the children of disobedience. Now this can be taken two ways. This can be taken as those who are not under the rule and reign of God and continue to live in disobedience and rebellion unto him. And this could also apply to those who consider themselves followers of the Lord Jesus who have surrendered unto the will of God, consider themselves to be saved, born again, but when you look at their lives of disobedience, you see that they are not standing on the side of Jesus. And so their lives are being ruled by the prince of the power of the air because they are following the course of this world. And Paul says in verse 3 that that's what we have been delivered out from. For at one time, we also had our conversation or our behavior in times past in the lust of the flesh, in the lust of the eye, in the pride of life. And because these are the passions that we pursued, we were fulfilling the desires of the flesh, the desires of the mind, and we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Why? Because when we walk in disobedience to God, we become his enemy, and therefore we become the object of his wrath. But God, who has been rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were shaking our fists in his face, when we were dead in sin, when we were rebellious unto him, he has quickened us, reanimated us, brought us back to new life through Jesus Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved. And he has raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. 
through all the reward and promise that we have awaiting us when we arrive in the new kingdom. And there's nothing that any of us have done to deserve this, for it is only by grace that we have been saved through faith which means trust leading to the absolute surrender unto the Lord Jesus. It is the gift of God, nothing that we should have done on our own. Because if we had done it on our own, then we could boast about it. But it's not based upon our works, and therefore we may not boast. And if we do boast, it's only through what the Lord Jesus accomplished through his life, death, and resurrection. And we are his workmanship. We are his product. We are his craftsmanship. We are his invention. And we have been created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now, just because we've been saved by grace, not by our works, doesn't mean that we are to eliminate works. Because we have been saved in Christ Jesus so that we will perform good works. We will live our lives as Jesus lived his life when he walked upon earth. And God has before ordained us unto these good works that we should walk in them. We should live in them. They should become all our passions and all our desires. Remember that we were in one times past Gentiles in the flesh. We are not of the bloodline of the Jews. We are from the uncircumcision, the pagans. And we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We were strangers unto the covenants of promise. And we had no hope. And we were without God in the world. Do you remember in John chapter 1 verse 5 it says, The light shineth in the darkness. Hope came to the hopeless. And Jesus is the hope for all humanity. So for those of us who were at one time distance to Christ Jesus in verse 13, we have been made nigh by the blood of Christ. When Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was rent and tore in two. And this made the way open for all who would come to come. And Jesus is our peace. And he has made both one, both the Jew and the Gentile both the bloodline of Israel and the pagan. And he's broken down the middle wall of partition, which one time divided us. And he abolished in his flesh the enmity, the separation, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to take in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, that he would reconcile both Jew and Gentile unto God in one body by the cross. And by doing so, he has slain the enmity which was thereby. And he came and he preached peace to us which were afar off. And he preached peace to those who were nigh. The glorious message of the gospel of the good news of Jesus is made both available to the Jew and to the Gentile. For it is through Jesus in verse 18 that we both, Jew and Gentile, have access by one spirit unto the Father. And we are no more strangers and foreigners, but now we have been adopted into the family of God and we are fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. We are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, All the great men of God, both in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and the New Covenant, the New Testament. We stand upon the foundation that they have laid for us. And of course, Jesus Christ, he is the cornerstone of that foundation. It is in Jesus that the entire building of old saints, new saints, and all those to come into Jesus through the message of the gospel are being fitly framed together like a well-oiled machine, and we grow into a holy temple in the Lord. And we are being built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit through Paul is reminding us of here is that as we live in the light, we become so accustomed to the light that we might sometimes forget the darkness. But it's important for us to go back and remember the darkness that we were saved from, that we were delivered from, 
when Jesus took us by the hand and led us out of that darkness into his marvelous light. And it is when we remind ourselves of this fact that we can truly celebrate the grace, the light in which we now stand. And we may not have attained all the things that we hope for or desire in the person of Jesus in full and absolute surrender unto him. But friends, we are no longer comfortable in the darkness in which we once were. Or as I have said before, we may not be all that we want to be, But praise God, we're not what we used to be. We are no longer liars. We are no longer blasphemers. We no longer pursue the things of this world. We are no longer self-absorbed. We are no longer drunkards. We are no longer fornicators. Our entire bodies have been given to the work of the Lord Jesus. We no longer talk like we used to talk. We no longer think like we used to think. We no longer practice the things we used to practice. We understand that Jesus is master, Lord, and King, and it is our greatest joy in life to surrender unto his will and to place ourselves beneath him, seeking to fulfill all of his desires and obey all of his commandments. And we do this because of what we were told in verse 1. Jesus Christ has quickened us He has resurrected us from the dead and given us new life. Whereas we were once dead in our sins, now we are new creations in Jesus with new hopes, new desires, new passions, new longings. And every breath we take from here to eternity will be only to bring him glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. And friends, notice what he said in verse 3. We were at one time given in our behavior to the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the lust of the mind, and the desires of the mind. And as we know from past lessons, our greatest enemy is our mind. That is the battleground. And so don't allow the enemy to beat you up for what you're not. Certainly listen to the Spirit in His convicting power to propel you and motivate you in all that you can become, but don't become so focused upon what you have not yet achieved that you lay down in the fight and you give up. In other words, reprogram your mind. Don't allow your mind to weigh you down and make you hopeless, but shift the thoughts in your mind so that everything within you believes that God who began a good work in you We'll continue to complete it until the day that the Lord Jesus returns or you pass from this earth. Well, friends, I trust that this has lit a flame in your soul this morning. I pray that it has put a pep in your step, hallelujah. And I pray that you will be challenged, encouraged, and motivated to be all that you can be as a soldier in the army of our Lord. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.